Hi everyone, it's Cal. I hope you're doing well. Uh, today I wanted to answer a question from a subscriber. Actually, it looks like it's nine questions in one. Um, but before I do, I wanted to uh, say again, I know I've said this before, but I really want to reiterate that these videos are just my opinion. And everybody is different, even though we are fundamentally the same. I want you to never forget that you have the answers inside of you. There is no one who knows more about you than you. But I understand that sometimes it's very helpful to uh, bounce questions off someone else who's been through the same thing that you've been, that you're going through. So, um, so yeah, so here's, here's, Question one out of many questions from one subscriber. Question one is, can you tell us exactly what to do once the Kundalini is awakened and we don't know how to rise it? Okay, so Kundalini is happening to you in a variety of ways. It can be going this way and it can be going this way. Sometimes one part of the Kundalini will connect and another part uh will stay open until you have the energy to connect it. Uh, remember, it's, it's, it's words, deeds, and thoughts uh, that can also connect the Kundalini, but fundamentally, it is good health, okay? So you really got to have that block. So um, that building block, the building block of good health. The more energy you commit to your health and the more you practice uh, the commitment to your health, then uh, the more naturally the Kundalini will move up or down or connect to its right regions. Remember, the Kundalini is a bunch of stages. So whatever you're um, preconditioned to, say you're uh, really root chakra oriented, so that one's going to connect, right? But maybe you have issues in other areas. And so um, that part of the ladder, which we call chakras, which is the center point that the ladder connects at all the way up the body until you have, um, you go back to the creator, uh, but just remember the creatrix is the one that's allowing this to happen. She's the big boss. Um, so, so that's how you rise it. Okay. So you got the Kundalini awaken. How you rise it is through focus on self, good health, and um, watching words, thoughts, and deeds. And if you want to know more about working on the different parts of your Kundalini ladder that creates the bridge that you connect back to uh, the creator force from which the fragments of you came from. Um, you can look at any chakra book and that will, um, and that will tell you how you could activate certain parts of the ladder. They don't talk about it as a ladder, um, but that's exactly what it is. It is forming a ladder so that you come full circle and that's what ends the circle is your ability your conductance power ends the cycle okay when you connect back okay number two question this person had is can you tell us about kundalini twin flame sex and kundalini orgasm yes i can uh I would say, um, <clears throat> first of all, what exactly do you want to know about Kundalini twin flame sex and Kundalini orgasm? What specifically do you want to know? Um, because the number one focus of this channel uh, and the messages coming from it are to regulate and balance your meditation, to regulate your life, to balance, to create uh, healthy habits, and to understand a little bit more about the vibratory mechanics of the human body. So <clears throat> I think 
what am I, what else about that? I think I got two of the questions mixed up here. Kundalini twin flame sex and Kundalini orgasm. Well, Kundalini orgasm, when you connect back to the source, you're connected to the creatrix and the creator. And it is truly the agony and the ecstasy. And the ecstasy is the Kundalini orgasm. There is no lust in it. It is pure love pumping into your system. But your system is not developed enough to actually be able to withstand that vibration. And that's why after you create the bridge, connect to your creator, you fall back because now you got to work on maintaining that high velocity of divine love. And that, and it really is like an orgasm pumping into you. And um, the more you connect to it, the less of the pumping because it becomes a constant it becomes a constant. So that's what we're working towards uh, by being on this planet. Constant bliss is really what it is. Um, twin flame sex, I don't know exactly what you're asking me about that. But um, yes, I've done that. And I really want to focus on the kundalini within the person not with others because each of us are really responsible for our vibrate our own vibration and where we're headed so it's really hard to um get into that other topic because twin flame sex and kundalini orgasm within that is really a watered down version sorry to say even if it feels super heightened you cannot imagine what you alone can do. It's incredible. You are incredible and your body was created to do the Kundalini. Okay, so um, the next question was about, let me get it back here. All my body, especially arms, legs, neck, and behind the heart, and I can't breathe. Uh, okay. Um, so it, it has been, sorry, I'm just trying to, I should have really put this in a document. It has been one year since I had Kundalini Awakening. I knew what it was, but didn't understand it. And now I'm suffering from shaking and meditation, which is becoming violent. I don't know what to do. Someone told me to stop meditating. Okay, I actually have experience with this as well. I would say, for me, if this was me, you need to regulate and balance your meditation with the world of the Father, which is the outside world. Um, yes, you can stop meditation, but really, uh, you're building your mind body when you do meditation and it offers you grounding, which you really do need to complete the Kundalini or to actually do the Kundalini. Cause remember the power is coming from the planet, which is your mother. Um, you, I would really suggest you, you know, getting quiet and asking yourself what to do. Let the feeling come forth. It will tell you and sit with the feeling for a while so that you can interpret uh, the emotional intelligence that it's conveying to you because you have the answer and I'm positive about this. Um, I have more to say on this, but I will uh, go away and think about it a bit and come back at a later date to organize it a little bit better. Um, you had talked about the body hurting, the arms, legs, neck, behind the heart, not being able to breathe. And although I, I want you to know that um, all of this pain is caused by the mind, and which is which causes a physical response. So some of this could be caused partially by dehydration, bad posture, not speaking your truth, feeling boxed in, um, 
at this point, rather than trying to get too, too mental and breaking it all down, I would probably focus on body work and I would start with postural work for the spine, um, which affects your standing, sitting and walking because it actually could be something that simple, that when you work with the spine um, and you get better alignment, uh, many of these things could dissipate because I actually had all these things myself. And that is what I did. I worked on the spine, um, such as I used, I started with Alexander Technique, uh, which you can just Google uh, to realign. And then I began with yoga to stretch the spine along with breathing exercises. But the yoga, I did the, I actually did the Bikram hot yoga because it's so strenuous. And what it does is it pressurized my body into regulation when it came to breathing. Um, and just the stress of the hot room also really forced me into um, a certain amount of balance. And that kind of evened it out for me along with um, breathing exercises that I did, which is, I did the 478. You can look that up, the 478 breath. You want to regulate your breathing. And by doing regulating the breathing and by realigning the spine and by doing the yoga, you should be able to release pent up energies over time and get into a good space. I don't think I'd go too much into the mind at this point. I would start with walking and breathing, and then I would introduce Alexander Technique and yoga, um, because you wanna be releasing these, these pent up energies that have been stored inside your body for such a period of time. Okay. Uh, I awoke with my twin flame who thinks that I, I awoke with my twin flame who thinks that I caused damage to him. Okay. Well, we all need to take responsibility for our own vibration. That's just the way it is. Uh, nobody's to blame for anything. Uh, we are only susceptible if our vibration is open to it. Um, you're responsible for your vibration. I'm responsible for mine. I'm responsible for situations I put myself in. It's so simple and fundamental. This is how it's designed. Each of us are responsible for our own vibration and that's just the way it is, full on stop. Now, I understand about uh, young, young children because a lot of times in certain situations they'll take over the vibration of the parents, etc. But really, um, when you get up to being an adult, this really is. And sometimes we spend a lifetime unraveling the vibrational habits that we got, that we inherited from our parents. I know I have some, and uh, it's just the way it is. But once you start really attuning yourself uh, to what is truly you, which is the task of being here on the planet, you know, the task is not here to become super wealthy or to become admired or, you know, th th these types of things. The, the task is really to be your authentic self and work on your vibration diligently, control your emotion, which is power. And once we do those things, we have the Kundalini, we understand cosmic awareness, and then we go back to what is it? Chop wood, fetch water, chop wood, fetch water. That's, I think that's what the Sufis say. And that's exactly what it is. You've had the divine realization. You're able to calm down and get a good perspective on really what it's all about. Then you realize your job really is to chop wood, carry water. And, and that uh, life will take its toll. So getting into a state of balance after you've achieved all these things, it's pretty hard, it's a pretty hard go. It's a pretty hard go. Okay, so let me see. There was another question. Ah, so someone told me that all the shaking 
is a result of sorcery and bad spirits. Okay, well, I just have to tell you, uh, because I've had experience with this, if it's the same thing, and no, it's not. It's not related to sorcery, bad spirits. It's actually related to you controlling your own body, releasing blocks, etc., to put it in a really fundamental way. However, let me just say that vibration is attraction, right? So it's created by the individual, which means the individual controls it. Everything is vibration. All the evil spirits that are out there live outside of you and inside of you. And when they're activated inside of you, they connect to what is perceived as outside of you. And I, I think um, if you if 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 you want to know a little bit about this, I was actually confronted by the devil at some point because I had been in such a state of um, how do I say this, uh, dissing myself or not validating the self. Okay. So then it goes into the opposite, right? The, the energy flows down instead of upward and it goes into the opposite. It's a little bit tricky to understand, but I'm sure you get it. And if you want to, um, I think I, rec I, I did record a video at the time that happened to me and I uploaded it. So I think I have a couple videos that are called devil videos that I talk about this. So again, it's all about where your vibration at is at that you're going to attract or not. Um, and by setting your vibration, you can either allow them or, or not allow them to create in, in your experience. Um, all you have to do is just readjust your focus and and the influences will be discarded, okay? Don't become paranoid because the mind gets right out of control. I would simply focus on becoming mindful of your thoughts and your self-talk so that you get to a happy place, which means your vibration is happy. Okay, I think you had another question here. Ah. Uh, you also asked, you also said you just cry and feel lost. You're just lost somewhere. Now, um, yes, I went through this. And just remember, this is my own, this is my point of view. I'm not a doctor. Uh, but from my experience, this sounds pretty normal. And it also could be that um, what I felt was happening for me, and I think this could be happening for you, is that your body is somatically shedding its emotional blocks. Or, and, or, your inner child is wanting attention. If it's merely your body shedding blocks, then you can throw yourself into the sorrows of it. I found that when I threw myself into the sorrows of it, I would shed faster and just feel better incredibly quick. It's when I try to fight it that it just goes on forever. If it's your inner child, which it could very well be both, for me it was both, then you really need to look at what your what her deep desires are. Because, number one, overall, your body probably needs regulation, health, food, sleep, friends, and work in a daily pattern to get into balance. Uh, because we get so lost in meditation, we forget about the joys of being alive. And after we have these extreme experiences, our desires change. You know, we lose we lose the desire for our desires. It, the, the bottom just drops out. And when the mind doesn't have a focus, um, depression sets in. The mind, like the, uh, the monks always say, the mind is a monkey that needs a banana. And that is the truth. It is the mind. Um, another thing this subscriber says is that I feel that I'm tied from the root to the throat and someone is tying me up, I am lost. Okay, well, number one, you're not lost. There's no such thing because you are here on the planet with us um, and you're here for a purpose. The purpose is to build your body. I mean, that is the purpose. And if you want other purposes, there's other purposes, outward purposes as well. Again, only you have the answers. Um, I would 
look at the programming you may have received from your family, from the culture, from media, and I would place it beside what your inner child wants. Um, that inner child thing is a really important thing. It's something that I dummied down for most of my life, and you can only dummy it down so far until something severe happens, and I had something severe happen. Um, so your inner guide is always trying to direct you, and it could be that your mind is either diminishing true desires or not believing in the direction, or again, you are awaking to the sham of your old desires, but have no new desires to replace them. Got to find new desires to keep the interest going in life. Whatever it is you have, the answer, the answer is that you can free yourself through thoughts, words, and actions. You really can, but this takes baby steps. Um, you have to monitor your thoughts. You have to readjust them to be positive. If you can't believe that, it always has to be believable. And that's why it takes baby steps. You start with something that is a little bit believable. You achieve that. You get a little bit more believable in the positive sector, right? In the, in, make sure it's positive. And it's just baby steps rewiring the way the story of the mind through thoughts, words and actions i have if you're talking about new desires if you need new desires i have a free meditation and i'm going to put it in the description box below so help yourself to that um you can also just google you know, meditations. I mean, there's infinity on YouTube. Make sure it's it's positive and it helps the mind not relax, but give it actually a focus, something positive for you to try mine, get a feeling from it, and then go to the others. Um, it might help you locate what your heart wants for you. And I think that's the, um, that really plays a part. So that was the answers. Well, I wouldn't say answers. That's my opinion <laughs> on um, some of these questions. I really hope that they helped. I, I am going to answer some other questions, but I'm going to put it on another video because this one is getting a little too long and, um, you know, it was kind of intense. So I hope this helped. I hope it in some way you can use it to make your life better and make um, all things come into further balance for you. Really, the, the key is balance. And other than that, um, I'll see you next time. Bye, everyone. Take care.